Okay, we're back with David Timms to wrap up his model on transformational leadership. David, will you tell us where we've come from, where we're going? Yeah, thanks, uh, David. It's been fun to have these conversations with you. But uh, basically, we've defined transformational leadership as a model, as producing change and building lives. That's what we try to do. Uh, And we do it through uh, authenticity, inspiration, empathy. And in this last conversation, we also do that now through innovation. Now, I think it's interesting that your first point on innovation is to encourage ownership. And you gave, if I'm remembering correctly in the book, you gave an example of the Frito-Lay guy who came up with the super hot Cheetos or whatever, which I think are the Cheetos of death um, that, you know, my girls love to eat, but uh, it's, it's neither here nor there. It's been incredibly successful. Mm-hmm. And here you had this huge corporation. And didn't that guy, ha- what level did he have to present to, present his idea to? Wasn't it like way up the food chain yeah. there? Food yeah, chain, he, talking about he a food all company. the way to the president. And he was nothing but a, a janitor. He was cleaning the, the place at night and remembered watching a little uh, clip on a sort of a, a closed television feed that said where the, where the president is saying, I want, I want everyone in this company to think of themselves as owners. And he thought, okay, that's what I'll do. And, um, and at some point in time, you know, the machinery broke down to tell the story very quickly. He takes these uh, Cheetos, takes them home, but they don't have the cheese dust on them. So he just pours all of this hot seasoning on it at home. And his family go, man, that's the best stuff in the world. And uh, he suddenly feels like, maybe I've got a product to pitch. And he, invite, he asks the president if he can pitch the product. And the president says yes, because he's been telling everybody, think of yourself as an owner. So he and his wife go out, they buy a couple of business books on how to pitch a business idea. He buys himself a tie. Long story short, it began an incredible career, which ends up with him being the vice president in charge of uh, sales to this financial team over the uh, community. Uh, an incredible story of uh, you know, zero to hero kind of thing. It was great. <laughs> well, I, I think that's great. I think that's great. And then, and the the interesting thing is when you're talking about transformational leadership and your first point was authenticity. Yeah. I mean, here, here this president could have very easily said no, um, but he had painted himself in a corner and he knew it. And so he opened the door and what a door he opened. I mean, I don't know what the sales of those things are, but well, that's I know the they're very part. popular. It is still Frito-Lay's biggest seller. Uh, so it was, it was quite the door that he, he opened. He had no idea how big that door was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Now, the next thing you talk about is taking risks. Now, now, and then I think you get into allow failures. And so I, I want to talk about that. I, I want to hear your perspective on that because you got all kinds of craziness going on as, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm an old stock market guy. So I went to college at UC Berkeley, didn't stay to finish and went to work on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange in San Francisco when it was there, no longer there now. It's a health club. But um you know, I look at what we've got going on now with valuations and other things. It looks very frothy. looks very concerning. I mean, you're talking about, I think there's a dozen unicorns, which are companies that have a billion dollar valuation or more that will, that will lose 14 billion this year and have like total losses of over 40 billion. Obviously, we're not going to give that kind of money to employees if they're a member of our team or our nonprofit or whatever. Right. But where do you balance the, the risk piece with the, um, the, 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 the loss piece, I mean, and, and how you, and allowing mistakes. The, you, you want to allow risk, but, and you want to allow mistakes, but you also don't want to get hurt. You know, not too many of us are going to make, uh, you know, significant decisions about those unicorn companies, <laughs> thankfully. Um, but, but really the principles are the same all the way down again to the family level. And it doesn't matter how big the organization, two employees or 200, it doesn't matter. I think what you've got to weigh up always is the risk to resources and the risk to culture or values. And uh, I want to say to people, if you want true innovation, you've got to take a risk. You've got to encourage ownership, take risks and allow for failure. That, I mean, that's, that's the formula. And it sounds so easy, but it can be so difficult for us to do um, because we're afraid of failure, because failure for all sorts of reasons is loaded up negatively for us. Um, but, but that's the formula. That's how we get innovation. You don't get innovation. Otherwise, what you get is groupthink and, and you get stagnation. 
So how do, how do you decide when is something, when's a risk not worth taking? When is something too risky? And, um, you know, in, let me take the family because most, most of us are in families, if, even if we're not in huge corporations, right? At some point, uh, the risk to the family resources will be too great. You're going to say, no, we're not going to do that. You know, your, your son or your daughter says, uh, I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to start an entrepreneurial venture. And mum and dad, I want you to take a second, third mortgage on the house. And I want you to take dip into your, your retirement savings and just support. You know what? The risk to resources is too great in, like, in light of your likelihood to succeed. So no, that's not a risk we'll take. Sometimes the risk is to values. Hey, um, I'm going to take a risk as a parent, let you go and do what you want to do as a kid. Well, I, what I want to do is I, I want to, I don't know, I want to smoke uh, weed and, and have a great time. Well, hang on, as a family, that's a risk to our core values. We, we, we have feelings about that. and We've made decisions about that. That's not a risk we're, we're willing to open the door to. So some risks will risk the culture. Some will risk our resources. And anyone who's wise and sensible is going to have to weigh that up all along the way. But it is a mistake to withdraw and say no risk. You know, we are going to be a risk-free family or a risk-free company. That, that's, an, that's an impossible uh, position. So the question is not will we take risks, but how will we manage risk? Will? Yeah, I, I think that's very good. It reminds me of the book, The Lean Startup, which basically was his premise was that you take risks, but they're very small. Mm -hmm. And I talked to him, I used the acronym CRT, low cost, low amount of resources, low amount of time to see whether it's got any legs to it. And actually your, your Flaming Hot Cheetos example is an ideal example. There was almost no cost. Right. He had some seasoning cost, <laughs> right? He even got the Cheetos for free because the machines had broken down, right? right? And so um, that was the thing where you can, you can balance that. Now you do talk about, and I don't, forgive me, I don't recall exactly what you say, but that's why you're here. You talk about a balance between innovation and ethics. And what, what, what are you trying to encourage to happen there? Is that more of this not limiting too much, not risking hurting the family or something like that? Yeah, what I'm encouraging people to do is to realize, and this, is, this goes to the point I was just trying to make a moment ago about uh, you know, do we risk culture and risk values? Um, the answer clearly has to be no to that. And so innovation and ethics have to go hand in hand. There is never a moment when I should promote innovation at the expense of what I believe to be ethical, moral, and right. And once, once those two separate, it's clear which side I've got to gravitate toward. Innovation can, can wait. It can, it can go on hold. Uh, once it moves beyond what I value and what, what I hold to be true and important, it's innovation beyond the, those boundaries we're talking about. So um, what I'm simply encouraging people to do is they think about how do we release creativity? How do we un, uh, unharness uh, innovation within our organization or our family is to say, and don't forget that this has an ethical component. Don't sacrifice culture or values on, on sort of this, this altar, uh, this idolatrous altar of innovation. Well, you know, it's interesting. And then you, you move into communication structure. And I recently talked with someone who's a leader and they went into a meeting and the first item agenda, they, they brought forth some communication and they got ripped into for bringing too much information and wasting people's time. And then the next topic that they went into when they brought the information, they got ripped into for not bringing enough information. And you talk about communication structure and setting proper expectations. I mean, what, what advice do you have for our audience here? Well, I think the one thing I've experienced uh, over the years myself is the challenge of organizational structure versus communication structure. And when people use the organizational structure as a way to minimize communication, they don't go around me, don't talk to a person above me, uh, make sure everything comes through me, um, you know, you're not allowed to talk to certain people. We have protocols and expectations. As soon as you start doing that, as soon as you, as soon as somebody, and it could be myself, starts managing the information that tightly, because organizationally I'm above the next person, what I do is I kill communication, I kill innovation. Innovation has to have a much uh, larger field to play in than simply the organizational structure that exists. And uh, so 
in as much as uh, Richard Martinez was able to go straight to the president of Frito Lay at the time, um, why wouldn't we all have that sort of open door policy for a great idea? Um, though many organizations and sometimes even families, you know, mums and dads can do this with their kids as well. Uh, you don't talk to her about that, you talk to me. Uh, and it's like there is a structure that both quenches communication and kills innovation. And I'm simply encouraging people not to let the org structure dictate the communication structure. Great, great point for people to think about. So David, uh, as we wrap up, there's the book. Everybody should get a copy of the book. All right. It's, it's Shape Your World uh, by David Timms, T-I-M-M-S, and grab that. And David, will you give a recap basically on your transformational leadership model and, and we'll let the audience go? All right, uh, 30 seconds. Uh, you want to know what a real leader is? It's somebody who produces change and builds lives. That's, that's it right there. Uh, and you do that by being authentic, by being inspiring, by being empathetic, listening, caring, responding, and, uh, and also by uh, releasing innovation and creativity in the people around you. And, and those four pillars produce those two outcomes, and you will transform the, the lives of, of those people around you. Awesome. I love it. Thank you so much, David, for being with us. And thanks to our audience. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, David.